Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to a new video on my channel. So I had some questions about my bike and sometimes when I post some stuff on Instagram about it, I get quite a lot of questions, let's say about the tires, bar width, inserts, anything like that. So I'm just gonna run you guys through all of my bike basically. It basically came from when I last raced it in Châtel. I actually, to be honest, haven't ridden it since Châtel, which is... <laughs> pretty funny because it's already like a couple weeks ago but kind of over it for a bit so I was pretty tired as well after the big race vlog so got some time off the bike but I thought I'll run you through the whole setup I'm basically gonna tell you what I run why I run it and so on so um, yeah let's basically get to it and um, I'll show you my my setup for this year when I raced all of the EDRs, um, in Finale, in, or Pietra, sorry, Leger, Chatel, Ludonvier, and uh, Valdi Fassa. So I'll tell you what I run and so on. So yeah, let's get into it and um, yeah, show you guys what I'm working with. So let's start with the heart of the bike, the frame. This is the Canyon Strive in size small, as you can see. So it's quite a big small compared to normal brands. Um, it has a 450 reach, quite a long bike for a small. So keep that in mind when you're checking it out. So yeah, and it's in the green white colorway, which uh, looks pretty cool to be honest. It has this cool little fade going on, which is really cool. So you can see a bit more in detail. I also did a bit of testing with the medium frame but I found out the medium frame was a bit too big for me. So that's why I'm on the small. Now let's start with the cockpit. So let's start with the stem. So this is the base stem from Reverse. I'm sponsored by Reverse for quite a couple of years now. And um, yeah, I ran the, um, the black one uh, version before, but it, it's only in 50 mil and 35 mil, I believe. And I kind of wanted to have something in between. So that's why I'm on a 40 mil one. Reverse handlebars as well. These are the Fink handlebars. I think these are 35 mil rise and they are cut down to 760. Now I run 770 on my downhill bike, but for the Enduro I run 760 just because it's a bit better for the cornering and stuff and because it's quite tight. So that's why I run a bit of a tighter handlebar for the enduro sand hit hand guards with these little custom graphics that i designed myself actually um yeah which are pretty nice i really like them especially when you look at them from the back it has a little padding on the inside and then when when you're riding um yeah they feel they feel like they protect your hand a bit better now um let's say in the case of an impact you get like a tree or something it like flexes quite a bit um, which is nice so let's say if you're riding and you hit the tree um your hand will be between the plastic the padding and the tree so that's pretty nice and i've been running them since this year and i really really like them and i got these custom grips um with these little rubber bits at the end and that's because when i ride i tend to hold the handlebar like this and because there's this little clamp just like on this side under it my skin doesn't really like it so that's why i got these rubbers on here just to make it feel better for my hand talking about brakes let's go over to the discs these are the reverse discs the reverse aircon discs i believe which has these little ventilation things which actually do really work these are the two and the three mil ones um and uh yeah i really like the feel of them they cool very good too on the long stages like in val di fassa or something where they were like 10 15 minutes they have worked very good and um like this combo with the code brake and then the reverse aircon disc is really good combo like i really like the feel of it less about the brakes more about what we got on going on the front so since this year i've been riding for Erlins as well so we got the Erlins rx f 38 
model 2 talking about the setup i am basically quite closed on the compression settings and then quite harsh on the pressures as well especially in the the bottom chamber i run quite a lot of pressure like almost the max that is allowed so yeah earlings in the front and then earlings in the back as well this is the ttx 20 model 2 as well but with a different piggy bag to fit in my frame because as you can tell it's very tight in here um these this is a this is a 475 lbs one yeah as you can see i'm on the middle for the high speed compression and the low speed compression somewhere quite close as well i think rebound pretty slow i've got to mention about basically the heart of the frame we got schwabi bottle 750 milliliters of water in there which is we just which just barely fits in here but it works fine sometimes it could be that it's rattling a bit on your frame i run a sometimes a little elastic band around it just to make it hold more to the to the inside let's say so it doesn't make this rattling noise then i got an inner tube in here as well combined with some co2 bombs in there actually i run two ones plus the tire um just in case i get a flat and it doesn't seal straight away holding by this little frame strap from canyon and then here yeah, there's a little custom bit which my dad made for me which uh works pretty good i think you can also buy it but my dad likes to build stuff and then there is the duct tape over it as well um, just because sometimes this bit hits the shape shifter and um, then it makes a bit of a noise and with the duct tape around it it's better plus let's say in a mud race when there is a lot of dirt and a bit of like small gravel rocks on it um, it can actually make a hole in the tire as well and you basically get a second flat so that's why i run the tape over it now talking about this little shape shifter which that's down here since we are talking about the heart of the bike this is the shape shifter and what it basically does like there's a little shock in here and what it basically does is changes the geometry of the bike i'll give you a little show of what it does so there's a button up in here there's two buttons this is the dropper button like this is the dropper button but there's two other buttons up here as well and if i click on this one it changes the geometry of the bike and if i click on it right now you can see it does this little thing and now the geometry of the bike is different and it basically is like a pedally enduro climbing bike which makes quite a lot of difference with the angle of the seat and with the height of the seat as well because it comes up a bit and you have less travel in the shock which makes the pedaling easier now to demonstrate what it does now to demonstrate what it, what it can do when you want it back in place is you basically you just sit on it and then oh sorry you basically sit on it and then it gets back into its place yeah it's pretty handy little thing and it works like the dream it's actually perfect i really really like this way because you don't have to compensate anything for the pedaling now coming back to what we were talking about the bit of the front of the bike so we got this little mud hugger evo on the front you can basically just bog it in here now i cut it off a little bit because my frame is actually this short that it hits this part of the frame you can like see it a bit here so i cut it off a bit that's why it looks like this bit is a bit longer than that bit talking about wheels we got the reverse base wheels both on the front and the rear and then we got magic mary in the front and i got inserts in here as well so i'm running the pro core system so you can see I have a bit of a special valve because I actually can unscrew it. So I have two valves basically in one. Now Proco, like Schwalbe, doesn't make these inserts anymore. So I don't think you can get them. But as a sponsored rider, I still run them and I really like them as well. So Magic Mary in the front combined with the reverse base wheel. Yeah, that's basically all we covered for the bike now. As you can see, this is the, the plate I was running in Chatel earlier last month. 54 on the plate. Now, fun fact, some people ride stuff on the handlebars. Like I have a sticker here with, with my time 
names for the from the last race but um, some people also write stuff on the handlebars now i just put a little duct tape on it and write some stuff on it sometimes now this is basically three words which i <laughs> i'll keep secret but basically this is a message for myself when i'm racing because sometimes you look like down on the handlebars or in front of a stage so this is something it's pretty funny to 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 show you guys and to tell yeah what's going on here with the duct tape so on the top tube of my frame there's a little mound over here which usually is placed for my garmin this is made by leap components but unfortunately i broke my garmin in uh Ludanvier. whoa okay so there's no garmin in there anymore talking about the seat now this is the reverse am seat i think this is the enduro seat from reverse really good one quite squishy but it's good i had a lot of hours into this saddle so um yeah really like it good stuff it's uh combined with the dropper from canyon one thing which is very cool about this dropper you can change the amount of travel so you don't buy one which is like stuck yeah get the right length for you so i'm in the on the most length but it's because um i'm quite tall for this frame so that's why maybe for a smaller person is he would go down a bit now working our way down we got the reverse components dash guard which is a uh, a bit of a let's say prototype ish because the one that they make is actually not able to fit my frame combine the one from the downhill i think with the enduro one so i'm not sure which combination we got over here but i'll get uh, the name down here so you can see which one it actually is um so reverse bash guard you got the old chain on here as well which basically gives you less pedal kickback now i am on the nine degree mode so you can change the mode inside that's why i'm running both of my downhill and my enduro bike we got a 32 teeth chain ring on there combined with a 1052 cassette crank brought us mallet dh pedals i chose for the dh pedals just because there's a bit more of a platform over here which uh Sometimes with enduro you have to like uh, clip out, so you're riding basically on a on a flat pedal, let's say. So I wanted to have a bit more of a platform, so I'm running the DH ones. I rode the uh, the enduro ones last year, but I decided I was going for the DH ones, and the green color actually looks very cool combined with the green from the frame. So I really I really like it. Now talking about the last thing on this bike, the tire. This is the Schwalbe Tacky Chan. This is the new tire from Schwalbe. Now a lot of people think this tire is only made for the rear, but it's actually made for the front and the rear. The only thing is that um, I think a lot of riders like the feel of the Magic Mary, and so do I. Sometimes I run the Tacky Chan in the front as well, but it's actually only with dry conditions. So mostly I'm on Magic in the front, Tacky Chan in the back, um, but to be honest, I really, really love this tire. I think before I was always running the Magic Mary front and rear just because it was my, yeah, basically, basically it was my go-to. And I think if you want to take the safe option, Magic Mary in the front and rear is probably the best you can do. In Pietra, I was running the Tacky Chan on the front and the rear because it was very dusty. I think at European Champs this year with the downhill as well, but for mostly like in Ludanvier, Chatel, Leo Gang, where I got 25th, I was running uh, Magic in the front and then Tacky Chan in the rear. What this tie does really well is it has a really good all round grip and it's really easy to guess the grip. Like when you lose grip, it's very easy to control. Um, the only thing is with the Magic Mary digs a bit more in, where this tire I feel like is a uh, less digging in, but very good on like the side bit. Like the side knobs are very nice and uh, it's very easy to control. I both run inserts in the back and in the front. So that's basically it. Now I'm just gonna show you the other side of the bike real quick. And I think then we are basically done. So yeah, I've basically been running this bike all year. I did some races with the DH, but most of the time I was doing the Enduros just because that was my main focus for this year. And to be honest, it has been one of the best decisions I've made. So yeah, I really love this bike. And as you can tell, I can talk a lot about it. 
all of the details and stuff because I really really put in a lot of work this off season to make sure everything is like perfectly how I want it and um, yeah I had a lot of time to do testing as well like in Pietra and in Scotland so um, yeah um, I'm just gonna show you so one of the things I miss I'm running centered brake pads front and rear and um, I have these little zip ties in here um, sometimes uh, let's say when you could break let's say this bit from your lever or something else maybe um, you get a flat tire or like a big dent in it like you want to fix it with zip ties that's where it's for now you can pressure up the shape shifter up here and then this is the number plate this is from the enduro series this plate you can only get when you race can't get it unfortunately um online or anywhere else it's my name on the bike as well shout out to canyon um now if you have any questions in regard of something i missed or something else of the bike that i do one way and you just want to know why i do it like that just hit me up in the comments and i try to answer it so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh maybe if you guys like it i'll make one for my downhill as well and the ive bike as well the canyon spectral so i can even make a video of my spectral if you guys want to hear about what um I've been running on those bikes, so hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in the next one. Ciao, ciao.